Next up, we're going to talk about how you can extract certain columns from a data set once you've read it in. So you'll often read in a set of data, but it's got a lot more columns than you really need to work with. You can extract just a part of that for what you need to do right now in R. It doesn't do anything to get rid of the original data. It just gives you something nicer and cleaner to work with in the session that you're working with right now. So we'll do this pretty often. I've done a kind of cartoon version here. And you can see that what we're going to do here is take a larger data set and pick out just a selection of that in terms of the number of columns. The function for doing this in dplyr is named select. We are selecting columns. And I've put in generic code just to show you the usage for this call. Typically what you'll do is you'll per first put in the name of the data frame, and then you can put in each of the column names that you want in your selection. And you separate those by commas. So we'll do an example with the daily show data. That's something that we've already been working with. From the previous slides, we did some code to read that in, in our R project. So if you set that up the same way, you can take the code that you did before, and we can highlight it all, and then run that whole thing. And down here, we can check and see, let me just move this up a little bit. We can print out daily show and take a look. And you can see here, we have a data frame. It's got five columns, year, job, show, group, and guest. So what we're gonna try out right now for this week's slide is we're gonna try to select everything but the year. You can see this information about the year is also embedded in the column about the show. That's got the show date. So we'll get rid of this and just have a little bit of a smaller data frame to work with. Often in real applications, you'll have many, many columns, and so you'd be selecting off even a smaller subset, but this will work for the example. So if we want to do that, the first way we can do it is do select and then data, and we put in the name of our data frame, which we named earlier as data show, right up here where we're using the gets arrow. Next, we need to list the different columns that we want to, to keep in this subset that we're grabbing. So we want to keep job, show, group, and then guest. If we run that, you can see down, rearrange, you can see down here in the console, it's now taken that off, so we only have four columns, the four columns that we wanted to keep. Now we saw last week that there's another way to do this. Instead of doing the names of the columns, we could have done it by the position of the columns. So let's go back and look again at what Daily Show looks like. I'm gonna highlight and run that so we see it again in the console. And we can see that we want to keep columns two, three, four, and five in terms of the position. So we could use select with that where we create a numeric vector inside and do two, three, four, and five. Again, as a reminder, this part with C, that's running concatenate and it's creating a vector with numbers in them. You can see that down, you can see what it's created down here in the console. So now when we run it, it will select just those columns in those positions. All right, so we can see it did the same thing. So that gives us two options. Another way we could have done this is if you'll recall, we can use that colon operator to create a, to, to create a vector that's going two, three, four, five. So this takes the first number and the last number and creates a numeric vector that's a sequence along those from the first number to the last moving by units of one. So this would have worked too and would have been a little bit shorter to pull it out. The last thing that we can do, and this is pretty cool, select lets you do that same kind of idea but with the names of the columns. So let's look at the names of the columns one more time. We'll print out daily show. So we want all of the columns in this case from job all the way to guest. So select will actually let us use that colon operator with the names of the columns, which is pretty a pretty cool functionality. So we can run that and you can see that's a di again done the same thing. The last thing that we're gonna do that we're gonna look at here is we're gonna go in and if you only wanna take off one of the columns, there's actually an even shorter way that you can do that. You can still run select, and do data and the name of that data frame. 
But now, instead of listing the columns we want to keep, we can do a negative sign and just the column that we want to get rid of. So let's run that. And you can see that that's done the same thing, but it saved us a lot of space. The other thing to note here is right now, we haven't reassigned this to anything. So again, if we run daily show down here, it's printed out what we wanted when we did that select call, but it hasn't changed that daily show object because we haven't reassigned it. So let's come up here and we will reassign that to daily show. Use the gets arrow. Again, this is gonna take what we had here and overwrite it with the output of the select call. And I'll just get the indentation better there again. And now we can run this. And now when we come down and print out daily show, you can see that it, it's reassigned that object name to cover this new revised version where we've made that, that correction. So now that we've done that, I'll get rid of all of kind of our practice code up here. And now we have a nice clean script where we are piece by piece going through and reading in our data and then cleaning it up. So I put in some slides here where we're going through those steps and I'm not gonna go through these in depth again because this is showing what we just did, but I put these in here in case you'd like to take some notes on them. So first of all, we have using position, using that two through five. And then next we have doing the negative to take off the one that we don't want. And then after that, I'm using head as one way that we can explore the first few rows of the data. This slide is just showing how we can use that colon operator with the column names rather than positions, which can be very helpful because it keeps you from having to do that job of counting out to see what position the columns you want to keep are in. That's all we're gonna talk about this week in terms of the select function, but later in the course, we'll look at some other really cool things that you can do with it. For example, if you had columns that started with a certain pattern that you wanted to pull out, like if you had columns that were giving different dilution levels for, for an experiment and all of them started with the word dilution and then a number after, you could use select to pick out all of the ones with that pattern of starting with dilution. The same way you can pick out all the columns that end with a certain pattern and even all of the ones with a certain pattern inside them. So we'll look more later at some of these clever things that you can use with select instead of just listing out the exact column names. But for right now, you'll be able to create any kind of subset in terms of columns of your data that you want just by naming these columns using this basic version of select.